Hey, how's it going? Hello again. Yeah, haven't seen you for we, a while. Yeah, we missed last week. Um, good old calendaring issues. But yeah, time math is that hard. <laughs> yeah. 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 Not really that anybody on the internet knows that because uh, someone hasn't posted our previous video, so it's it's pretty much like we've been gone for a month at this point. <laughs> it is true. It's true. Um, that is coming, and this is a going to be a good follow up to it. Um, yeah. So the last video, which uh, will have been posted by the time you're watching this, um, was looking at a pull request um, in the Home Assistant skill. Um, a, you know, a relatively easy one, um, but just just to look at the process of reviewing a pull request, and um, and in particular in that video, we we reviewed the code uh, through the web browser um, so that we knew that there was nothing, you know, nothing bad in there before we pulled the code down onto our device. Yeah, we took a look at a lot of the, some of the features that that you can actually use when you're doing code review inside of the Git. GitHub platform specifically, and we just kind of gave some tips about uh, mm. writing some good code and giving some good feedback. And so I think in this this one, we're really looking to pull down the code and actually start trying to work with a specific pull request to, to test it. And uh, once we do that, Tony, I promise we'll get around to actually pushing your uh, your pull request in into the branch. It, it will happen as, as soon as we get through this series. <laughs> so yes. bear yeah, with yeah. us. <laughs> cool. So, um, so maybe we should just jump straight into it. And we're back. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so this is, the, uh, this is the PR that we were looking at uh, last week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> magic of the internet. Uh, yeah, so um, as, a, as a quick refresher, um, we were, it's a, a change that improves checking the availability of entities in Home Assistant. And so in, in Home Assistant world, an entity can be a light or a thermostat or, you know, any number of different things. Um, so we've checked the code. We know it's safe. We now want to pull it down onto our device, right? That's where so, we're at. So the code for this for this pull request, it it still lives in in Tony 763's um, account. So it's not in the Mycroft AI um, skill dash home assistant repository. It's in Tony 763. So if you mouse over Tony's name there, um, or actually if you just click on it, it should take you should take you through to his his yep. fork of the repository and you'll see that we're on the branch patch three which is where he's uh, done that work and so that's what we're going to try and get down to our device um so what have we got on our device at the moment um we've got mycroft core that's sitting in here and then in mm -hmm. mycroft core We've got our skills directory. I know you normally go to opt. I get lazy. So we've got the home assistant Fine. skill here. Um, yeah. And that that's basically it. That aside from that, we've we've installed the skill IoT control and the home assistant, and that's pretty much yeah, it yeah. from stock. Yeah, so if we switch into the home assistant directory, um, what we're, what we're looking for at the moment. So as I said, it, Tony's code lives in his fork. So we actually need to add his fork as a remote repository to, to our skill here on our machine. So um, we can have a look at what remotes we have already by doing git remote. Um, and you can see we've got origin, which would be the Mycroft original one. And we've got a stratus fork, which I think was when we were um, doing something. What were we yeah. doing? Um, we were actually pushing through one of the changes that I needed. Although that's a good question. I don't remember. Oh, yeah, no, we fixed we fixed the um, anyway, we did some bug fixes. That's yeah. The, yeah. Um, so so in that case, we, we added 
a, a fork for, for your account and now we're going to do the same for Tony's. So, um, so the, it's fairly simple to do that. We just have to go back and get the URL for his account or for his fork, I should say. Um, so it'll be everything up until tree. So So we do git remote add, and then we need a um, an alias for for his yeah Tony, and then space or Tony for for sure, uh, and then the URL. So the URL it has to have obviously the the domain, the author, and then the the repository um, Microsoft Dash Home Assistant. Um, but the rest of that URL that was the branch that it was on. So um, this will add the fork, so we can hit enter, and then we want to fetch everything from that fork. Tony, yeah, that's it. So that's going to go and have a look at everything that's on his fork that's not that we don't already have. So you can see there's there's a whole range of um, feature branches that that uh, he's been working on. Um, Tony's been doing a huge amount of work on, on Home Assistant. So again, a big thanks to Tony for all that work recently. Yes. Um, and the one that we're after today was patch three, right? Yep. So then we can get check out patch three. Um, so because patch three was unique, um, you know, there, there weren't any uh, branches called patch three in the, in the Microsoft AI version or in, or in your fork, then it just assumed that you wanted it from Tony. Um, if, if there were other people who had also, you know, had a patch three branch, then it, it probably would have failed and said, you know, I'm not sure which, which, uh, which upstream project you, you want that from. Um, and so then, you know, you can uh, tell it, uh, which one, um, but it should give you some description about what you what you need to do. Uh, it's got some relatively good indicators of like you know what's gone wrong and and how you can fix it. Um, but uh, but that's it for for this one because it was such a simple change. Uh, it's it's only code changes. Um, then that has changed the code that is in our directory on the device. So if we, um, we could, we could check that if we, um, what could we do? Is it in the init top? I can't remember where that was staged. Yeah. Well, we could, um, we could, we could grep init.py for the, um, for the name of that method, which was, um, we could just look for, hmm, good point. Why don't, instead of using our memory, why don't we just go over here and actually hey. review how to, what we were looking for. So over in the commits, actually, we want to take a look at, apparently I just Files clicked changed. on the wrong button. I wanted the file change because that'll give me something to look for. Check availability. All right. Your That's private right. method. So yes, Hooray. there you go. Yeah, so we can we can confirm is it's definitely the code has changed on our device, um, and Mycroft, even if you have Mycroft running, uh, it will detect that the code has changed in that skill, and it will reload the skill. Uh, so you don't shouldn't need to do anything anything extra for that. Um, if it's a if it's a larger change or there have been changes in the requirements for the skill, you know that that's often one of the big ones. So, um, you know, if a, a Python package has changed, then you might need to run um, pip install dash r requirements dot text to to make sure that all the requirements listed there are are in fact installed. Um, but for this one, it was nice and simple. So yeah, now we can now we can actually test it, right? So we need to start Mycroft and this will go with all. Sure. 
and then we want to do the oh you know what i should have activated my um my vomf and then i can do take a look at my cli and yeah. we have problem mm. perfect indeed um so where is this yeah so this is in the home assistant and what is our problem under... return result underlying function line 120 122 there we go so we we probably want to go and uh Sure. This is just going to be a little bit easier in the web browser. So it's complaining about oh, yeah, this, sure. but it's most likely. Let's uh, see. It looks like it looks like it might be one character short of an indent. If you. <laughs> oh yeah, I see what you're saying right there. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's give that a so, let's give that a test. Let's, yeah, let's. I don't know if you if you've got tabs or anything in your uh, terminal. Oh yeah, I can do that. Um, why do I do this? Whatever. Yeah, perfect. Make that a little bigger. Um, so maybe maybe have the CLI running in the top. Sure. You'll be able to see then once we make the change to init.py file, um, it will, well, that's going to be hard. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah, you're just not going to be able to see the, what I was saving for, but that's fine. Uh, if you do, what is it? Control shift underscore for line, I think. Or just jump. If you do control shift underscore, then you should be able to type in the line number 122. Yeah. Oh, he's got a space. That's why I couldn't find my search. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. So if we. Yeah, so it's definitely missing one. So we've written that out. Uh, and it looks like there was another red line. Failed to load. Return false. 123. Um, maybe instead of the CLI, we should, uh, do a, uh, just follow the, um, the skills log output. That might be a bit easier, particularly on the small screen. Well, it's not that small. It's just, uh, for you people on the internet to be able to actually read my screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and it's because the, the Minecraft CLI has that huge input area. So, yeah. um, but if we do tail dash F. Um, and then on bar log mycroft skills dot log. Um, so this is I actually use this quite often instead of the CLI because particularly when you're only caring about the skills output, um, it's it's a nice easy way of of seeing just that. I just triggered mycroft. I got the little boodoop that it's listening. <laughs> <laughs> It hurt me. Hi, say it. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so on 123, return false. That guy right there. Yeah. What's, I'm not even sure what that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, this either needs to come all the way in so it lines up with the rest of the block. Yeah. Because, yeah, that meant that this ended the if statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would also, uh, maybe I should double check this, but generally I only use the the triple quote doc string format for actual doc strings. And yeah. if I'm just doing comments in in a function, then I'll just use a the comment a hash, the the octothorpe. Sorry, the octothorpe. Yes. <laughs> Uh, oh man, that that's a callback. There, 
I used to work with the person that got so angry that people didn't call it an Octothorpe. I mean, no. Yeah. Really? Yep. Um, I mean, it kind of bothers me when people call it a hashtag because I'm like, it's neither of those things. It's neither a hash nor a tag, right? Like hashtag is literally the tag. It's definitely not hashtag. It's definitely not. But hashtag. there are people that call it hashtag. And I'm like, it's not a hashtag. Like there's so many things you could call this. It's not a hashtag. <laughs> um is it ha anyway i'm not let, let's not <laughs> the intent handle um, is not defined i wonder if it's if it's um importing intent file handler and not intent handler yes so uh it's i'm surprised that's Um, it'll be because, so this is, this is probably related to that. There've been a, a bunch of updates to this recently. And, um, and so this change is working off an, an older version of the code, um, and doesn't have some of those bug fixes in it. Um, but yeah, we can just add intent underscore handler in that list of imports from Mycroft. Um, just in case there is another one in there that's that's uh we need a comma before, uh, oh. after intent file handler thank you well, the end of my day this is what pair programming is all about absolutely well it didn't blow up this time so that's the thing Hooray! <laughs> so the um home assistant has a uh, a bunch of mocked tests. So actually do micro dash skill test runner. Uh, I think then just opt micro skills and then home system. And I think that should be it. just the top level. Yeah, just the top level. Like so. From memory. All right. Well. We don't need to make code changes. So I'm going to close this and get rid of that. Yeah. And, uh, give it and a go. Moment of truth. Ran 20 tests. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So we can, we can, this shows us that at the very least, it hasn't significantly broken anything. You know, everything is still working as expected. Um, but we probably haven't got any tests specifically in for this method either. So, um, so to really test this thing, you know, we'd need to hook up a home assistant, um, device, uh, and, and then, you know, uh, make an entity available and, and perform some action on it and then, and then remove the edge, like leave the entity in home assistant, but make it unavailable and then um, and then try and perform the same action and, and see what happens. All right. So we ran through the, uh, the automated testing just to make sure that worked. And then off camera, we went to try and get a device that would actually be unavailable. And what we discovered is my device names were not necessarily always being recognized by the Home Assistant skill. So we went and got a simplified one and I just have a plug on my desk that's normally for my tea kettle. Uh, and so I just, I don't have any flashy displays for you, but we'll be able to show you when a device is offline. So I'm just going to, I'm going to unplug it right now. And uh, well, first I'll show you here that it's actually on. So there's my tea kettle in the UI and I'm going to, I'm just going to unplug this right now. And we already know that it takes up to 60 seconds for uh, home assistant to detect depending on the polling interval interval mm. so if i came back over and here and i told just it to be to clear that that was all one that was all one entity that yeah that was one listed. entity yeah so if i wanted to do turn on tea kettle here it says it's turned it on and the reason why the skill is misreporting that even though the plug is literally right here is that Home Assistant hasn't quite timed out yet. So it's still polling in the background to avoid flapping and stuff like that. Now it's just become 
unavailable. And so we should be able to test Tony's new skills because, or his addition to the skill, because previously, if the device was unavailable, there was no feedback for an unavailable device. So in theory, I should try and do this, turn on the tea kettle. And now we get the tea kettle is unavailable. So with this, we can say that, yes, the skill that uh, the home assistant skill has been upgraded to handle an unavailable entity. Now it doesn't solve the problem of the skill itself, not being able to find the entity, depending on how you've named it. Um, we had all kinds of problems with it. I have about, I probably have about, I don't know, I want to say 80 entities in my home assistant. And even though I only have one thing that has the word desk in it and happens to be my, my desk light, it was turning on my bed light, light for whatever reason. Uh, we changed it to lamp and every once in a while it wouldn't find the desk lamp. And so there's some work to be done in this skill still with the entity matching. But with regards to this uh, pull request, I think that we can say that this pull request does exactly as it was intended to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so even though, so the, the previous to this change, if um, the tea kettle had been registered inside the skill as an entity, you know, that exists, um, then it would have just continually tried to, to turn on and off the, the tea kettle. Um, but now it actually detects whether or not it has become unavailable, even though it, it, the entity does exist in home assistant. Um, so that's, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I think the, the whole naming thing is an interesting thing with home assistant too, because, you know, often when you're, you're setting them up, if you're not doing it in the context of Minecraft, you're not, you're not thinking about how should I name this entity so that it's easily callable by voice. You're just, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, personally, you know, most of us that are developers would, would probably be calling things like T dash kettle dash zero zero one, or, you know, maybe not, maybe you don't have multiple tea kettles, but like, you know, lounge room light zero zero one lounge room, like underscore zero zero two or you know, whatever um yeah. and so yeah we in the skill we need to to work on how we how we convert those sorts of things um into more human readable uh human expressible formats um, yeah that particularly bit me like you can see here in the output it says t dash kettle because that's actually how i name things like my long history with unix tells me don't put white spaces in anything. And so none of my entities actually have white spaces in them. And that was yeah. part of the problem that we have. Like it becomes a little bit of a mouthful to say, turn on, you know, table dash kitchen dash light. Right. Cause yeah. I wasn't able to get some of those things to match. Sometimes it would match and other times it wouldn't. And it wasn't clear to me why it works sometimes and not others. Hmm. And the duplicate tea kettle there, like that that's from your home assistant, right? The, so the deep duplicate tea kettle, what this is, is that inside of MQTT, there is a device name and then what's called a friendly name. And there are right. two different fields. And for whatever reason, uh, this is being keyed off upon here. So the f I set the friendly <laughs> field and the, the MQTT ID to be the same just because mm. and for whatever reason that's being pulled in here yeah right well that's something for us to look at too um cool but everything everything here looks like it's working great so um we've reviewed the code we uh gave some feedback on that um uh and uh and that's been addressed already um and now we've verified that the functionality is working as we expect uh, the the integration tests are all passing so i think i think we're good to go i think so too so we'll wrap that up uh, off camera and we'll come back for our outro as it were <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um that kind of wraps up this series so in this this kind of mini series that we have we covered how you deal 
as a maintainer with incoming code. So taking a look at it in the web browser, making sure the code isn't going to do anything obviously malicious before, before pulling it down. We pulled it down to our system. We ran the Mycroft unit tests on it to make sure that all of the unit tests were still passing after the new code was added. And then we took a look at Home Assistant. So I have an active Home Assistant and I simply removed a plug to make it un unavailable and tested the code again. And we verified that the code actually does what it says it's going to do with an unavailable entity. And that pretty much wraps up the, the whole purpose of this kind of mini series. Um, so we'll be doing other videos moving forward, but we're always open to um, community feedback. We, we have some ideas together that we're going to keep plugging away on, but if there's anything in particular that you guys want us to cover, or uh, you can even do some sort of Q and A, you know, we'd be happy to answer some questions. So if we get some feedback or anything like that, you know, it'd be, it would be great for us to feel connected to the community. Yeah, for sure. Um, any, any questions you have, um, we're always happy to answer those and, uh, let us know what you want us to cover, um, what things are tripping you up. Uh, but hopefully, uh, as, as you said, hopefully this, this video and this, this little mini series, um, can help people to, um, to review pull requests that are out there and, and help us to get those changes merged in more quickly and shipped out to, to everyone in the community. Um, so yeah, if you, if you want to help out, uh, you're not sure where to start, then definitely come by the, by Minecraft chat chat.microsoft.ai and jump into the skills or the dev channels and you know uh, people in there are very friendly though so i'm sure they'll point you in the right direction there's plenty of um pull requests to uh, to take a look at there's lots of potential new functionality uh, we just need to make sure that everything's safe and functional and working as described before we um before we push that out to people so uh, we'd love your help absolutely so I think we'll wrap this up here and we'll pick it up in the next video, whatever, uh, whatever topic we decide to do next time. So until next nice. time. All right. See us. Ciao.